What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this end of the work week. It is Friday, February 4, 2022, about uh, 1.44 p.m. California time. Yeah, a little late, a little early. However you want to decide on this update video, but nonetheless, an update video uh, in the works here, including some, uh, we got some earthquake activity out there ramping up around the globe. Of course, right now, the latest quake, a 2.8 earthquake up here around the Gulf of Alaska, somewhat deep as well into the Pacific and North American plate subduction zone at uh, 94 kilometers. Let's go ahead and check out the movement here. Over the uh, last 24 hours of earthquake activity on the map here, of course, we had that uh, 6.1 earthquake down here in the Southeast Indian Ridge striking uh, just a little bit ago. Pretty shallow earthquake. We haven't seen too much earthquake out here in recent times. It's a little bit of further movement here to the west. Of course, we've seen quite a bit of deep movement and swarming activity over here along the Kermadec Trench. I believe that's firmly playing a part here uh, in the activity we're seeing today further to the west. So, uh, Also, 4.9 into the Vanuatu area. Pretty shallow earthquake. Far as Pacifics go in the Kermadec Trench, a little bit of movement over the last 24 hours, all around the 10 kilometer depth, a couple fives and a 4.7 uh, just earlier this morning. Fiji looks pretty quiet, uh, not a whole lot going on up through the Indonesia area. We did have a 5.2 along the Java Trench here, somewhat deep earthquake at, uh, what do we got, 47, point, uh, yeah, 47 kilometers for that earthquake. Of course, that deeper one further west or east here. The Philippine plate and areas to the north. Look at this. Very quiet. I mean, something's got to give here eventually. It's uh, been building up quite a bit of pressure and accumulated stress here for quite a while. And uh, with no major release of pressure here. So I'm kind of watching this area pretty closely. Uh, areas to the west here. Quiet for now. But I think with the further westward movement that we've been seeing down here along the Australia area and to the area to the west in the Indian Ocean, uh, we should see some further movement here throughout the Middle East and the Mediterranean Sea uh, popping off pretty soon. Uh, areas of the Atlantic pretty quiet. South America region getting in on some activity uh, with some deeper movement into the Peru-Chile Trench. A couple earthquakes there in the mid-4 range and somewhat deep. One of them 164.4 kilometers and the other one there um, a little bit more up to the surface at 118 kilometers. But still uh, earthquake activity kind of deep down there. Uh, are we looking at this is 2.5 and above? Let's go to the all magnitudes here. See what we've got moving around the Puerto Rico area. Of course, we've been watching this swarm of movement here over the last couple days that continues uh, from last night and into the morning. No significant uptick around the Puerto Rico Trench or the uh, remainder of the Caribbeans here in the east. Although we did have a 4.8 off the coast of Costa Rica down there along the uh, eh, kind of looks like the southern end, just barely to the southern end of the Middle America Trench. So uh, and that one's 24.3 kilometers below the surface. The rest of the area looks pretty quiet, of course, uh, in the 4.0 threshold. There is some threes and whatnot kicking off here on the EMSC map. Uh, we'll check that out here in just a little bit. Some activity also along the eastern part of the country, dealing with quite a bit of cold weather out there, I hear. Uh, 1.9 in Virginia and also a 2.9 up here way up here in the New Hampshire re region. Kind of an odd area to see an earthquake. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on with the uh, um, hazard map. See if we got uh, specific faults up here. There's definitely marked here on the map for hazards, uh, indicated there by the USGS uh, from uh, some studied faults. It looks like that earthquake struck uh, within a region there, plate dynamics and fault systems out there. Although, the, uh, I don't believe the USGS is showing any specific faults here for this area, uh, but there's definitely some out there, uh, just not marked here on map. 2.9 earthquake there around, uh, what is that, Gorham? Gorham? I'm sure this was felt pretty broadly, uh, 2.9 at a pretty shallow earth, uh, pretty shallow depth there in the eastern part of the country uh, will be felt over a broad area. A few folks reported feeling some shaking out there in the light category. Did you feel it? Responses shows quite a bit of move or quite a bit of uh, reports there, all over uh, the region there in the east part of the country. There's a little earthquake down in Virginia, just kind of odd, right? But a little bit further east than the activity that we've been looking at there in South Carolina and Ohio. Remember, of course, Ohio had a little bit of earthquake swarming up here, north of the Cleveland area around the Lake Erie uh, region. But today, pretty quiet up there. But movement uh, kind of working its way east there. It looks like. 
uh, Oklahoma and the Texas area down here around Midland. Seen some activity as well. Not a whole lot uh, more earthquakes than, than a, just a couple handful of earthquakes here in the region. I'm sure there's, um, you know, pumping and oil gas fields out there. So we're not going to go into that today, but uh, just probably out there. Not going to be surprised by it. Uh, a little bit of activity through the Yellowstone region. Let's go ahead and check that out here while we're on the map, it looks like, at least on the USGS map here. 2. Point, uh, what does it show? 2.9? Let me see here. I don't see any upper twos there. Let's see what we got. A little bit of activity around the north area of uh, Yellowstone Lake. Just some microquakes, it looks like. Although, I am not specifically seeing that activity here on these charts. So I don't know if that's older or whatnot, but uh, this other area over here around Maple Creek definitely shown some small, very small microquake earthquake activity here. Uh, and I don't believe that's the stuff that, uh, or I don't believe that's the ones the USGS is talking about. I believe this is a separate swarm a ways away from the Lake Yellowstone region. Uh, Idaho into the eastern part of Sierra Nevada, pretty, uh, pretty good uptick as well into Nevada. Uh, southern part of the state in California, San Jacinto Fault area northward and south, all shown some activity, but nothing significant. We did have a little ramping up and a swarm of activity out here around the hydrothermal operations going on around the Cobb Mountain region. Of course, there's that geothermal plant uh, drilling into the ground and uh, using up that steam and heat uh, to produce energy. And that's all this earthquake activity is all about. Some of these earthquakes can get up around the 3 to 4 range. I believe the largest they've had in this area is a 4.5. And that's due to the uh, um, the uh, rocks and whatnot, the, the uh, underground material kind of cracking underneath uh, pressure. Uh, there was a, there's all sorts of articles about this hydrothermal plant here. I'm not going to go into it here, but uh, we'll cover that another day. But these earthquakes, they say, are not volcanic related. They're just due to the... Uh, the um, the steam and the pressure and whatnot uh, that's being removed in this area to produce energy. Uh, I believe these guys, what was it, 3.3? I think this came in as a 3.5, a little bit downgrade. But uh, on occasion, we do get these uh, these earthquakes popping off here. Of course, got uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, potential here. Mount Kanaktai up here around the Clear Lake area. That's this area right here. Beautiful looking volcano. Uh, as you travel Highway 20, I take this road quite often when I go over to the Fort Bragg area. But uh, it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. And uh, for sure, telltale sign of some heat and whatnot down below. I mean, they're tapping into it. But there's uh, quite a few articles in regard to that uh, activity. If you guys are interested, uh, just do a little Google search on it. And you, well, guys, you guys will find a whole bunch of info on it. Some further movement around the Mount St. Helens area. In and around the summit. Uh, nothing significant at the moment. Uh, was looking at GPS movements here at the Mount St. Helens area. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, I don't see any major uplift. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in to the Mount St. Helens area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And check out that uh, GPS uh, deal here. We'll go ahead and check out just for fun. Uh, we'll go right in the crater here and check out the GPS movements here which don't look like they're too readable kind of looks a little off the chart there Let's go ahead and go back down here and check out another graph can't remember which one i was looking at earlier one of these showed uh there we go gps displacements uh vertical looks pretty uh looks pretty calm i mean if anything is pretty good decline of activity far as the uh vertical uplift and uh, all other charts look pretty clear. I, mean, I believe it's plate tectonics there, uh, stress and whatnot going on at the summit area and the uh, rest of the region. We have been seeing a pretty good uptick in trimmer activity in the Cascadia subduction zone. Last night we had 288 epicenters of trimmer, mostly at the southern end of the Cascadia. I know Mount St. St. Helens is up here, but I believe there's a little bit of trimmer up here as well, not uh, being reported. It's kind of odd. But uh, we'll see what it looks like a little bit later on this evening uh, for the uh, trimmer activity. But there is activity, nonetheless, at the Mount St. Helens region. Some microquakes, nothing significant. A little bit of activity over here just west of the Three Sisters area, right? Kind of watching that one. This one's a 1 1.1 at 33.9 kilometers. That one there tells me that's a pretty deep subduction zone quake. 
of course, inland, right? The further inland you get, the deeper these earthquakes become. Uh, we have seen some further, further activity around the Klamath Falls region as well. That one's pretty shallow surface, uh, surface quake, a little microquake there uh, at 7.4 kilometers. But uh, overall, a little si sign of uh, some increased uh, stress and whatnot here at the surface and below uh, into the trimmer area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, areas up north along the Canadian coast, we'll check that out uh, here along the uh, Earthquakes Canada map. And uh, see what these guys here, what they have. A little bit of activity over here to the east. Got that red circle here indicating that 3.3 in this area of Canada within the last day. Wait, that's, uh, let's see, where were we at here? When was this? 2-4... Oh, this is the, uh, hold on a second here. Bring this back here. I'm not for sure why that disappears like that. The entire map disappears. This is that same earthquake that uh, USGS was showing up over here. Although a different magnitude. That's a little on the odd side. Right, these guys showing a 2.9. Earthquakes Canada showing a 3.3. Uh, so a little bit of difference there in the uh, magnitudes. Up into Canada, Canada outside Quebec area. Uh, that's a very small earthquake, 0.5 at 14.6 uh, kilometers. The rest of the northern part here of Cana uh, Canada, uh, northern territories and whatnot, look pretty quiet up here to the north. A little bit of movement here in the Gulf of Alaska and around the BC area. But uh, Cascadia looks like this activity here is from last week. But uh, movement nonetheless there along the plate boundary and the uh, Cascadia subduction zo zone on the northern end. Uh, let's see what else we got here. There's the activity along the Aleutian Trench. Some of it kind of kicking up there in a little bit higher magnitudes. 5.4 near the King Cove, Alaska region into the subduction zone there at 34.8 kilometers. And uh, let's check out Hawaii real quick where we're still seeing some activity ramp up in a big way out there around Mauna Loa. Let's go ahead and check out the latest info here from the Hawaii Volcano observatory on the Mauna Loa activity to see if they got uh, any status updates and whatnot. Mauna Loa still sits at a yellow uh, advisory. Check out the updates. This was put out uh, February 3rd. Mauna Loa volcano is not erupting. Rates of seismicity remain slightly elevated above long-term background levels but have not changed significantly over the past week. Um, other Mauna Loa monitoring data streams, ground, defor uh, ground deformation, gas concentrations, and visual appearance and webcams show no significant changes. But uh, the earthquake activity there is kind of popping off. The last uh, eruption was back in 1984, so we've got to watch this pretty closely. I'm, I have a feeling this one's going to get pretty active this year. But nonetheless, we're looking at uh, a good 43 earthquakes right at the Mauna Loa volcano, the world's most active volcano. On the Big Island, uh, showing quite a bit of seismic increase here. Nothing significant at the moment, but this could always change in the blink of an eye. Uh, we'll keep monitoring the uh, GPS displacements and whatnot and the seismic activity occurring there. Southeast flank, pretty active, uh, but very typical for this region. Kilauea Volcano, just one little earthquake outside the crater. A 2.0 at a pretty shallow depth there uh, towards the east part of the uh, volcano there, crater area. Uh, let's see what else we got, folks. I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone enjoys their day. Have a good weekend, and we will be back a little bit later um, unless something major happens. Have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys uh, very, very soon. Peace out.